Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It is an amazing day. It feels amazing outside. It's a little cloudy and overcast, but it's cool and it feels super awesome. So as you join in, be super hopeful. It's like super is the word today. Super, 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 super. Oh my goodness. This is going to be one of your favorites and you're going to want to save it. Get ready. What a way to end this week as we look at ironing things out. Ironing things out, and it's not what you think. It's something totally different. But, oh my goodness, get ready for expectancy and wisdom that will just bring so much peace and shalom as you enter God's rest. And he's given me so much analogy this morning as I was asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to share with your people? And oh my goodness, what he has is such wisdom from above. And so this is titled, Ironing Things Out. There are times in your life where you have circumstances and there is just disharmony with others. And it's not on your part, but it's on the other person's part where they just don't want to be around you and they just do not have peace with you. And you have to be in the space of ironing things out. And it's not you doing God's work in being God. It is you committing it into God's hands. So let me use this example. It is so super awesome. I was getting ready to go out this morning and I was like, what top do I wear? I gotta find a top. And I found this top and it had been in under some other shirts. And I probably haven't worn this in over a year and a half, if even that, maybe two years. And so it was super duper wrinkled. And you know, I put it on and it looked okay, but oh my goodness, the wrinkles were very, very prominent. And so I decided, you know, to iron it. And while I was ironing it, the saying came to me to iron things out. And something has been on my heart for a while in relation to a relationship that I'm in. And that person has a form of peace on the exterior, but I feel the energy from their members towards me and how they treat me differently than other people. And you know what? I moved into acceptance a, a, a long time ago. You have to understand, and you're gonna see this in the Forbidden Fruit, the Spiritual Dis-Ease, acceptance can be your best emotional transition because it allows you to move forward. So many people are stuck on a roller coaster and going up and down because you haven't moved into acceptance and you're expecting things to change in certain relationships and it gets you frustrated. And this is for you, it's for everybody because you're gonna go through this sometime in your life and it's called ironing things out. And so as I was ironing out, and you know, I've been praying for this person and, you know, just praying, because remember, we don't want to pray soulish prayers. Soulish prayers was like, I bind Jezebel, I bind Python, I da, 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 spiritual warfare. Most spiritual warfare prayers, most, not all, are soulish. And it's because the soul does not uh, see through the eyes of love, through the eyes of God, and is reactive based on past trauma and most likely is experiencing rejection. Remember, the acronym God gave me for traumas is terror, rejection, abandonment, unloved, massively announcing shame. That's what God gave me as the acronym for traumas. And so, most likely, you're experiencing rejection if you don't feel that shalom, that peace with someone else, and especially if they are treating you differently than others. And so, I've been praying for this person, I'm just saying, God, just touch their mind. Just give them peace. Just show them your love. Let them see through your eyes, Father. That's been my prayers and bring the fullness of salvation, God. Now, remember that word salvation covers everything. Whatever you need, it is God's grocery store. You go in there 
and you get it. You need healing, you need victory, you need prosperity of soul, you need breakthrough. That is God's grace restore. That is what we have in Christ Jesus. When we receive eternal life, we have God's riches and glory. Everything that we need is in that grace restore that we are able to eat from that grace restore and get food from that grace restore. So we're gonna get into that today. And as I was ironing my shirt, you know, God gave me a few analogies. Oh my goodness, y'all are gonna be blown away. Only God could give me this. Now understand I'm not brilliant, I'm just radically obedient. And I want to see God, I want to see God. So I get to see God, amen. And so as I was ironing my shirt, God said, Robin, think about the wrinkles that you're ironing out and how it talks about that saying to iron things out, which means to straighten things out, to put aside differences and resolve problems. Well, sometimes you just cannot resolve problems with people who do not want resolution and do not want peace. And although they might seem like they want peace on the exterior and they seem interactive with you, it is not genuine. It's not authentic. And it's just, uh, it's, it's manufactured. It's manufactured. And it's from the soul, from their traumas of their past in which they got anger and bitterness and they won't let go of it. And so they're just holding on. And so they're in a mock trial where they are a prosecutor with the accuser of the brethren, Satan. And they're expecting to see you at the defendant's side <coughs> where you have to defend yourself, <coughs> but you're not there. And it's their own prison and it's their own making. And so you're outside of that prison and you're looking in and you're praying for them. God, give them peace, give them shalom, give them your eyes, bring the fullness of your salvation. Pray Ephesians 1, 17 through 23, that they have the spirit of God's knowledge, wisdom, and the eyes of their heart are open and flow with light to have that understanding, amen. <clears throat> with understanding today resurrection power so they don't have to be in dead works okay <clears throat> and so as I was ironing my shirt out God said Robin when you think about what that person thinks about you and of course I'm gonna bring this concept in and I learned this a year ago when I entered a fast and I was going through a circumstance and God was showing me how the accuser of the brethren the enemy, Satan, was getting me to think about what others were doing to me. And it's not that they didn't do it, they did, but I just didn't need to think about it because every time I thought about it, I was coming into agreement with the accuser of the brethren and was dwelling on it. Remember Philippians 4, 8, to think on the things that are lovely, good report, things that are from above, things that are kind, things that are, you know, going to bring forth truth. Think about truth. And so God taught me, it was about this time last year, a little bit before, where God had me do a fast. And all through that whole week, he was showing me day and night. Every time I thought about unlovely thoughts of how people were towards me, how that was a coming into agreement with the accuser of the brethren. And it was affecting my heart. And so when we iron things out, Hebrews 12, 14 says that we're to strive to have peace with all people and holiness without which no one can see God. And so we always say without holiness, no one can see God, but we don't see the component also in verse 14 of Hebrews 12 about peace, because if you don't have peace, you have unforgiveness. It doesn't mean that that person has to come into agreement with you, that they, that they have to make peace with you. It means that you make peace with yourself towards them. And so the wrinkled shirt would be like me having this cool shirt and going out and walking. And although it might be, let's say I had a thousand dollar shirt on and you know, it's a beautiful shirt, but y'all, if it is all wrinkled, nobody's going to look at the shirt and say, man, that is such a beautiful shirt. She's got, they're going to say, look how wrinkled. That shirt is, they're not going to notice the beauty of the shirt. They're just going to notice the wrinkles. And so those wrinkles represent areas in your life where you haven't entered peace on your part to iron things out for you towards them. As God showed me many years ago when this woman that was a friend of mine and I poured into her whole entire family, I was pretty much the pastor of their family would call 
when people would die, would minister to them when they were in the hospital, and would just call her cousins, her uncle, uh, her other, just her daughter, daughters, her family. And she just got real bothered with me because she had had a dream straight from the pit of hell that was, I'm not gonna even repeat it, it was just so demonic, It's all I gotta say. And I told her that that was Leviathan and that Leviathan had given her that dream. And of course she got offended with me and it, the dream itself was so demonic that it traumatized me. And that's why I tell people, please do not tell me dreams you have about me unless they are good because they literally traumatize me. They pull on areas in my members of undealt with trauma of areas that need to be healed. And it literally is like tasering me like this from head to toe with trauma. And it literally traumatizes me for days. But thanks be to God in Christ Jesus, God has given me strength to overcome that kind of thing. But at any rate, she just totally cut me off and treated me like I was demonic and that I was of Satan. And you know, I was wrestling in my members with the Lord and she would not communicate with me and she would post stuff and I would just say, look, I know I'm probably being paranoid and y'all, yes, I do it too. And I said, but it seems like you're posting about me on your wall. And uh, I said, can we talk? And she just, just totally cut me off and just told me off. And I'm just like, okay, God, I cannot work things out with her. So what do I do? And this is what the Lord told me. He said, Robin, it doesn't matter what she thinks about you. And I said, okay, God, he says, what matters is what you think about her. And I said, okay, God, share more with me. Help me understand. He said, Robin, you've got to have peace in your heart that you see her, 1 Corinthians 13, 7, in the best possible way. And you just see she's got issues. She needs help. She needs prayer. And you think well of her. It doesn't matter the unlovely thought she thinks about you. And I was like, God, that is so amazing. And it just brought so much freedom. And so having the wrinkles on your shirt is where you're carrying the thoughts of other people. Now just think about this too. What if I ironed just the front of my shirt, but I didn't iron the back and I have this like thousand dollar shirt on, I'm walking down the road and people see the front of my shirt and they're like, man, that shirt is so pretty and it just looks so good on her. And then they would walk past me and they would turn around and the whole back of my shirt was all scrunched and wrinkled. And they would look at the back of my shirt and if all they saw was wrinkles, they wouldn't see the prettiness of the shirt. They would say, man, that shirt is wrinkled. She needs to what? Iron it out. Iron those wrinkles out. And so the back of the shirt represents wrinkles, areas of your past where you have not made peace, you haven't moved into acceptance. And so what does this look like? And it's so funny before I forget, I want to bring this concept in as well. And so as I did that this morning, and I just left the third park, I just walked around the third park, now I'm going back home and I'm at the second park and then I'll be back at the first park by my apartment. I'm doing my lap. And so after I'm walking, and I get past the first park. I'm here at the second park and I see a woman, cause this is like known as the dog park. All of them dogs go to, but park number two down here in downtown Birmingham on Highland, it has, oh my goodness, more dogs than any other of the parks do. And they literally have fellowship for a long time out here. And so as I was walking past the second park, I noticed this beautiful lab blonde like Lulu when we used to have Lulu and she passed in 2017 when I noticed that lab that lab was just pulling its owner and she was almost having to trot to keep up with this lab that's you know pulling her like this and the lab was pulling her to the park because of course it wanted to go fellowship wanted to go play it wanted to go run and it needed to go to the body okay and you know I just could see the peace of God 
that as we have that peace, now remember peace, shalom in Hebrew means restoration, restitution, being made whole, okay? And it's about you having restoration, you having restitution, you being made whole, although you don't see it in your life right now in circumstances. And so as I saw that dog leading her and she was being pulled by it, you know, I could just see the peace of God that we've stri you know, we strive to enter peace, Hebrews 12, 14, and pursue holiness without which no one will see God. And so that peace pulled her to the park. It pulled her to rest, the rest area. And God's peace pulls us to Hebrews 4, the day of rest, the seventh day rest, where we cease from our own labors and we let God be God. One of the biggest areas of freedom that God brought me many years ago when I was, you know, trying to make things happen for people to be okay with me and to be okay in general with each other and I was being the peacemaker, one thing God told me, or wanting things to happen for others too, one thing God told me is he said, Robin, you're not God. You're not Jesus. You're not Holy Spirit. So just leave well enough alone and pray and just commit it into his hands. And you know, God just taught me that, that I can't make people have peace with me and be okay with me, especially if areas in their members of trauma are the courtroom that they're sitting in in a mock trial in which their, their anger and bitterness is active and they're accusing me. I cannot change that. I'm not God, I'm not Jesus. I'm not Holy Spirit. And so I can only iron things out for me. I can't go to their house, open their closet, get their shirts and iron their shirts. I have to only iron things out for me. And so when we look at being in a good space, stop thinking about what others have done to you, even though it's unlovely, and just say, I break agreement with the accuser of the brethren. I choose not to think about this God, and I just bless them. I pray for peace. Your peace rule their heart. Your peace surpass their understanding, and just bring the fullness of your salvation in their lives, God. Saints, somebody needs to hear this today, because you're trying to iron things out with someone else, and you know what? They just want their shirt to be wrinkled. You can't, you know, being a mom of two boys, especially... My youngest, there's times in the past where he would get a shirt and I'd go, you need to iron that. You need to iron that. And he'd go, mom, it's fine. And I'm just, all I can see is the, you know, are the wrinkles. That's all I can see are the wrinkles. I cannot see the cool shirt that I bought that looks so amazing, that I knew that would look amazing on my son. I can only see the wrinkles and I'm just thinking, Man, just, and I would even say, just let me iron it. Just let me iron it. Sometimes he would. Sometimes he wouldn't. And you know what? I could not stress out all day if my son went to work with a wrinkled shirt. Because it's just, it's just a distraction, okay? And that's how it is when you're wanting others to have peace with you and they don't. So what do you do? you move into acceptance, wake up, reality check. They're not okay with you. And you know what? That is okay for you for this moment because you're not God. You're not Jesus Christ and you're not Holy Spirit. And so all you're called and required to do is to strive, Hebrews 12, 14, to enter peace. And this is what God showed me. And I'm bringing this in today. And I put this in, I hear the Father saying, just so love it, okay? And you know, Joel 2.25 and Joel 2.26 is what my ministry table it and my website tableit.org and all of these videos on my tableit channel on YouTube, it's based on, and it's in my book, Mindfulness of Christ. And it is Joel 2.26, which I'll get to in a minute. But Joel 2.25 says, I shall restore what all that the canker worm and the locusts have eaten verse 26, and you shall come and eat in plenty and be satisfied as you see God do wonders in your midst and no longer shall you know shame. 
and that's why I love Joel 2.26, and that's what Table It is based on. All of my ministries, like GodsFirewall.com, that's based on Zechariah 2.5, and I've had that since 2009. But I started Table It three years ago when I became a health and wellness coach for that component. And so let's look at this. The locust are the memories of your past. And Exodus 10, 19 says that God sent a strong west wind to remove the locusts and to cast them all into the Red Sea. And that Red Sea represents the blood of Jesus. And the wind represents Holy Spirit, where Holy Spirit removes those memories, those wrinkles and irons things out for you to where they're not buzzing anymore in your members. And so you're able to enter God's grocery store of salvation and you're able to get the amazing food. Like we're doing the Younger You Diet, we're on day five. And the foods that I get to eat, like butternut squash more, carrots, I've missed carrots, I get to eat bananas. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. And there are days that I can do a keto version of Younger You, but you know, I'm just living and I'm trusting the process. I'm gonna see what happens. And I think about younger you, God will, Isaiah 40, 31, renew your youth. Those that wait on God shall have their youth renewed. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so, Joel 2, 26, that we shall eat in plenty. Why? Because we've entered the fullness of salvation through peace, shalom, God's peace that rules our heart, that surpasses our understanding. And as that peace rules our heart, as it surpasses our understanding, guess what? Hey, good morning. We get to go to the grocery store, God's grocery store, and we get to eat some nutritious food that has substance and strength to our members. And this is where I'm gonna end because I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about the different state flags, okay? The different state flags. And it was just popping in my mind about Alabama state flag. And what's so crazy is on two different cars today, they had on the front of the car, the Alabama state flag. And for those of y'all who have seen it, it's just white with a big red X, okay? Well, the Hebrew Olivet letter actually is the ancient symbol of an X or a cross. And it means first beginning and strength. And it's so funny because AL, Alabama, is the first abbreviation state and so when we look at this or no it's not the first but it's al let's just say it's all in how many of you want to be all in for jesus all in for salvation you want to go to the grocery store okay and it's so funny because it's the 22nd state too and the last hebrew olive bit letter is the 22nd letter and it's tov oh i'm sorry all, uh, it's Tov. I don't know why I said Olive. Ah, oh, because of Alabama. Excuse me. Tov is the ancient symbol of the cross or an X, and it means sign, seal, mark, and covenant. But hallelujah, let's go from the beginning to the end, to Tov, to the cross. Go to the cross and get the seal and the mark of covenant on your soul to iron things out to iron it out, amen. And so as you move forward, think about this, saints. Think about this, saints of God. You are going to see the strength from the beginning of the cross of Christ Jesus, where he was crucified before the foundations of this earth. And you're gonna walk in that salvation. You're gonna eat it, eat in plenty at that grocery store of salvation. And you're gonna be satisfied. And as you eat of truth, of peace, no longer shall you know shame. And on top of that, God will do wonders in your midst. Think about that. How phenomenal. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing day.